So hello everyone, welcome to debate. Um, my name is Sakai again. I'm the regional coordinator for Bottle or the Bay Area Urban Debate League. And you're in the novice section. So this is like the beginners. So this is your first year in debate. You're in the right place. Um, let's look at our agenda for today. So we are going to first start with some speaking drills and then we're gonna move into a little activities. We get to know each other, you know, kind of like do a little fun game. And then we're gonna move into flowing drills. I'll explain what that is later on. And then we're gonna do an intro to the negative side of debate, a few announcements, and then we're gonna do a closing Q&A. So if you have any lingering questions, you can ask them there and some closing statements. Cool, 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 we'll get started. So now we are going to move into speaking drills. Um, the, for the people who were here last week, you guys already know what that is. For the new people, I'll explain it really quick. So speaking drills are just like little, um, drills we do to like build up our endurance, our enunciation, and just like practice the way we speak it around. Um, the way it works is that we do different drills for two minutes each time, and I'll explain it as we go along. So for our first drill, oh, let me let someone in really quick. Okay. So before we even get into speaking drills, I need everybody to just um, find something to read off of. So it can be a book, you can pull up the evidence packet that we sent you, you can get a magazine, just anything to read off of. So I'll give you guys like one minute, just get a book and we'll come back here. So let me go grab one actually too. as fast as we can. Yeah, and if you, like, again, it's no pressure to turn your camera. It's just to um, work on your ability so we can all see each other so that we're not alone um, if you don't want to. All right, so first tell us to read as fast as you can. So this is to work on because you don't want to debate, especially as you move up divisions so and you get to, like, varsity. They start to read really, really fast. So this one's just to work on your speed, just so you can practice reading fast pressure or anything. Um, if you are not a fast reader, it's totally fine. Just try to read as fast as you can. Um, and we're going to do that for two minutes. So I'm going to start a timer. When I say go, you guys are going to read really fast. And then when I say stop, we're all going to stop and then move on to the next drill. Any questions? All right, cool. So again, for speaking drills, everybody has to stand up. You can't sit because in debate, we do physically stand when we speak. Also, because it opens up our diaphragm, there's more air circulating, so that's a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so everybody stand up if you can. Um, <laughs> so if you do, so you can go. And we're just going to be reading really fast. Well, not really fast, just as fast as you possibly can go. Don't stress yourself out. Again, if you can't turn on your camera, if you can't turn on your camera, it's totally fine. Um, unmute yourself also if you can, so we can all hear each other, and you can also hear when I say stop. All right, I'm going to set my timer for two minutes. And we are going to start now. Okay, so the rest of those cab drivers are impossibly oh, difficult. She was a little bit She was so impossible. 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 She was so I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
all right cool thank you guys um so we're going to move on to our next drill which is um our next drill is actually over enunciation and the reason why we do this is because in debate we tend to speak fast enunciation goes out the window and <laughs> enunciation is just like the way we pronounce our words and how we um say every syllable within the word so um for so the way this is going to work is that we're just going to over enunciate our words and we're going to exaggerate it it's going to sound a little weird but um totally just bear with it so for example if i say can psychology be taught during this drill i'm going to say can psychology be taught like you're gonna you're gonna really hit every single syllable so if i'm saying reckless movie reckless cab drivers is impossibly difficult exam illustrate to like you know every syllable you say is going to be a little bit over dramatic and the reason why we do this is that when we start speed reading in debate we're not mumbling and we're, pre we're pronouncing the words correctly does that make sense all right cool any questions all right so everybody you guys like you're standing up already which is great um I'm going to set the timer for two minutes and we're going to go. So starting now. When so, and a reckless cab driver is getting totally different. all right, that's two minutes. We are done. All right, stop. All right, cool, cool, cool. So that's it. That's true. Uh, we're now going to move. Actually, for the sake of time, we're just going to skip and do one more. Um, it's in the traditional form. So we're actually going to just move on to backwards. And this is also really um, important for when we speed read later on in debate. 
because sometimes when we read, um, our mind tends to skip words because we're trying to read so fast so our eyes move faster than the words that come out of our mouth so the reason why we do backwards is because it forces you to slow down and actually make sure you read every word on the page so the way it works is that you're going to start at the bottom of your page and you're not going to read the words themselves backwards but merely the order they appear in the sentence backwards so for example if i have the sentence a psychology professor who describes the helping experiment I'm going to read experiment helping the describes who professor psychology the. So you're just reading the sentence backwards and you're just going to go up the page. Any questions? All right, also the timer. This is our last drill for today. And you guys can go. Go. Um, participating in speaking drills. I know they're not the most fun, but it'll definitely pay off when we are in rounds and you see your speaker points going up and you win those trophies because like you participated in this. Um, and also just on your own time, if you're unable to do it now, it's just really good practice. Um, as you guys know, like speeches are like eight minutes and we've only done like six minutes of speaking drills. So if you're like tired from this, it shows that like it's good practice because you're actually building up that endurance. So that's why we do it. <laughs> so just like stay tuned, do it on your own time. Um, they're just really good to like get in the habit of doing. All right, so we are going to now move on to an activity. The activity for today is called Devil's Advocate. So it's kind of gonna be like a knockout round, if that makes sense. So it's like you have like less than 10 seconds to respond or like to refute that argument. And if you don't, you're out. And we're gonna keep going until there's two people left. So I'm just gonna do this together. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can all kind of see who's doing what. So I'm going to give you guys a, a statement, for example. Um, like, let's say people sh should no longer be required to eat vegetables, right? And then someone's going to be like, I couldn't disagree more because, or like, I'm going to read down the participants chat and I'm going to call on people and you have like less than 10 seconds to give me a valid excuse to why you disagree with me. And if you don't, you're out and I'm gonna keep going. And then the last person left, what? Does that make sense? Yeah, I have yeah. a question yeah. though. Mm -hmm. so, so is it gonna be like last time we disagree with the person who went before us or do we just disagree with the first statement? Do we just keep disagreeing with the first statement? 
yeah, you're going to disagree with um, the first statement I make. And then uh, when someone's out, I'll give a new statement. Oh, okay, cool. So, so I'll, I'll point it out as we go. Like, um, for, like I'm reading down the participants chat. Like, for example, I'll be like, cats are better than dogs, right? And then I'll call the person, the first person here is Evan. You're going to give me a valid excuse as to why that's wrong. And then if you can't do that in less than 10 seconds, then you're out. And then I'll move on to the next person. The next person on here is Corey. And then I'll give a new statement and be like, red is better than blue. You have to refute that. If you can refute that, then that's good. I'll move on to the next person. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Does anyone want to suggest a statement or do you guys want me to just make one up? I got one. All right, cool. Um, people should people who own cars should only own electric cars. All right, and that was um, Enzo, right? Yep. Speaking perfect. All right, so, um, see, so we should only own electric cars. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So I'm gonna go down the list, and the first person on here is actually um. JM. You're first. So, so you have the chance. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the reason that not everyone should own electric cars is because it's been shown that electric cars cost way more and the majority of people are either middle to lower class, so it wouldn't make sense financially for a bunch of people to own electric cars. Okay, moving down the list, next person, Dylan. Uh, I can disagree with you more, Jan. I think electric cars um, actually help our society and we need them to help stop the climate crisis because as we move on uh the earth won't be inhabitable and that won't matter about poverty if we don't have an earth so all right kennedy i couldn't disagree more because gas is an important part of the economy and without it a lot of people would suffer all right scarlett All right, I guess Scarlett is out. Oh. Um, and also from the chat, we switch when someone gets out. So um, like once someone's out of the round, so Scarlett was out because they haven't responded. So now we move on to the next topic. Does anyone have another topic they want to use? It's all good, you're good. <laughs> Evan, did you have a topic? Uh, no. Okay, cool. Let me. Okay, well, I'll make up a topic and then I'll just go down the list. Um, so the next topic is that everybody should be vegan. Um, let's start with Enzo. Uh, I couldn't disagree with you be more because meat is delicious. Does right. it have to be a good uh, argument or could it just be anything? Just, just an argument. You know, it's just it's good like improv thinking on your feet like it has to have some substance to it like you know um and the statement was everybody should go vegan uh madison did you get the topic uh yeah i got the topic okay did you wait did you call one yeah oh sorry i didn't hear what the person before said so um so you just have to disagree with me you don't have to disagree with the person oh okay yeah um i disagree because meat can help your uh muscles grow all right um Aaliyah? well sometimes when people cut out meat or animal products out of their um diet they would have to take supplements and sometimes it can be like draining for your body and some people are not able to do that. Nice. Um, Galvin? Um, people should not have to be vegan because meat provides a lot of protein and also so do animal products like eggs and milk for people who are growing and just need the protein. Okay, Ruby? Um, I couldn't disagree with you more because um, cows are one of the biggest problems like with global warming and um, if we ate less meat, then there would be less, like, carbon input. Okay, Jackie? 
Oh, uh, wait, can I ask a question? So mm-hmm. do I ask, do I like uh, refute your point or do I refute the per- previous person point? Um, my point. Uh, can you repeat it? My bad. <laughs> because yeah, I, I was trying to vegan. listen. Oh. Uh, I believe you don't have to be vegan because meat is just, uh, like a lot of people already said, there's already like very protein. Um, there's chemicals that help you build your um, body, I guess. So, yeah. Um, you guys are actually better than I thought. Okay, so I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Um, let's go to, okay. The mitochondria is not the powerhouse of a cell. Um, let's start with Jordan. Wait, I didn't hear what you said. I said the mitochondria is not the powerhouse of the cell. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what that is. <laughs> no, you're good. I just, <laughs> it's like, it's just still like, um, like you're not going to know everything when you debate. So it's just like a good, like improv, like just throw anything out there. Um, I'll move on to, let's see if, or does anyone want to take this? I can take, take it yourself. All right, go. So the mitochondria is absolutely the powerhouse in the cell because there's no other organelle within said cell that could produce energy like the mitochondria can. Nice. All right. Anybody else want to add to that? And also, you don't have to know anything about cells. I don't. Um, If you sound confident, I'll believe you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I... Absolutely, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell because science uh, has said that it is, and science is proven through facts. And, and every science class I've known teaches that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So, and it's science, so therefore it is fact. All right. Anybody else want to take a? Here, I can go. All right. Cool. Um, mitochondria is imp- important. Um, but because um, it's a it's a cell and cells are important. So why is the powerhouse of the cell? Um, because it is part of the cell. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> anything. No, I'm you're good. The thing, about, the thing about debate is like, like I'm gonna tell you all now. Like around seventy percent of the times, they don't know what they're talking about. They just sound really confident. And your judge won't be able to know whether or not you're actually like, you're actually like you know, 100% right. So, like, a lot of debate is just, like, acting like you know what you're talking about and make it sound convincing. Because sometimes you might not, like, know how to respond, but if you sound confident, nine times out of ten, the judge will, like, vote your way or, like, you move towards that. So, like, you can spew nonsense, Did you but have it's not. Yeah. You're good? It's the middle of the cell. Okay. So. Um, I do not... Yeah. I mean, I'm That's not saying that you guys can just, like, say whatever on a debate round, but I'm saying, yeah, no, totally. I'm just saying, worst case scenario, if you are debating someone and you have 100% have no idea what's going on and you have your speech and you have to start talking, just sound confident and, um, you know, act like you know what you're talking about because you still have to give a speech whether or not you're ready or you, like, know what they're talking about. So as long as you sound confident, because, like, a lot of big, like, aspect of debate is performance, you know, the way we convey ourselves, the way we portray ourselves to the judge, how confident we are in our speaking abilities. And if we sound really good, we could be saying stuff that does not make sense. And your opponent, your opponents will, like, catch up on that. But the judge will be like, oh, they get really good speaker points because they sound confident, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Um, we'll go more into it as we, like, practice for debate rounds but that's just kind of what this activity was just getting you guys used to like just um improving more and like the way we speak um so now we're going to move into the negative side of debate and kind of how that works so what is the role of the negative and how do i know okay so just a general um overview the role of the negative is to dispute the affirmative so just to go to so like you know the affirmative has the plan text and they're advocating for a policy action Right. So the app this year is saying that we should require police officers to wear body cameras. So that's what the app is saying. The negative on the other half is saying that that's not a good idea and we should not implement that. That's the whole role of the next. So the neg doesn't have to solve the problems. 
that the affirmative is breaking up in the round. So if the affirmative is saying that we need body cameras because police brutality is bad and we need to solve for police brutality, the neg doesn't have to give you a solution to solve police brutality. All the neg has to do is saying that that plan is bad and it's going to make police brutality worse or it's not going to do anything. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, cool. Yeah, so a lot of people when they're on neg, they get tripped up because um, they're like, oh, we don't have a solution to the problem. Like, why should they vote for us? That's not what the neg has to do. That's um, the neg only has to prove that the plan is a bad idea. So they don't have to give a solution to the bad things of that abstract as well. I saw in Google Classroom that there was a um, uh, thing for um, the police and body cameras and stuff. Are we supposed to like study that and read that? Because like, is that going to be like our first debate that we need to read upon or? Yeah, so our first, um, well, like the whole year, the topic is like police brutality and it's going to be in that evidence packet that we sent out. So that's what we're going to be debating about. Um, you don't have to do any reading on your own time just yet because the tournament is not till next month. But if you want to get ahead or just like understand the topic a little bit more, um, you can read the packet. Also, we're going to have a workshop and that's when we're going to do like a little bit more of a deep dive into the packet. And I'll keep you guys updated on all the notes when that happens. Okay, thank you. So, um, so that's the role of the neg. And then what do you do on the neg if you agree with the accent? So like, especially for this topic, uh, I know like basically everyone's not for police brutality or, you know, but like, so you can think that body cameras are a good idea, but you still have to debate against it. So like, even if you agree that like, yeah, I really think police officers should wear body cameras, you still need to go against that. And then there's loopholes around it. Like there's, um, there's other ways, like there's counter plans where you can give a different solution. Um, we'll go over it, but I'm just saying, like, even if you think that the app is a good idea, you still have to debate against it. And I'm not saying, like, on the negative side, you have to debate against, like, you have to go against saying that, like, police brutality isn't bad, or, like, you have to, like, be racist or pro, like, bad things or whatever on the negative. I'm not saying you don't have to do that. There's other ways to debate around. You just have to go against what the app is saying. So that's the next side of debate. Uh, we're gonna skip flowing. We'll go into that next week. Um, so we're gonna do what makes up a negative argument. So this is kind of what we did last week when we looked through the app packet. We're gonna do the same thing, but on the negative. <laughs> so, and this is just like the hard way just to lay out like kind of how it works. And then once we get used to this, we'll move into like different, the more fun stuff of debate. Um, so what makes up a negative argument? So. The negative argument there are disadvantages, topicality, counter plans, critiques, and then there's case. And we'll go into this right now. Okay. So what are disadvantages? So um, these have the same components as an advantage. However, they are differ in two respects. The first is that disadvantages are a result of the action. Sorry. Um, the first is that disadvantages are the result of the action, the plan, not an indication. Second, disadvantages contend that the world would be worse off post plan. So this is kind of what I alluded to earlier when I was talking about it. So the disadvantages is saying that um, this, this is all the bad things that will happen if we implement the plan. So we're saying not only is your plan a bad idea, but your plan will make everything worse. So an example of this for police brutality and body cams, you can say body cams are a bad idea because now we have the illusion that police officers are going to be held accountable in reality, they're actually not. So there's actually going to be more police brutality because everybody thinks of problem solved when it's actually not solved. And now police officers are unchecked at a higher rate. If that makes sense. So that's just a disadvantage. So they're saying like, um, your plan makes everything worse. <laughs> so that's what the disadvantage is saying. Um, the uniqueness aspect is a description of the status quo. Implies that the plan would make the world net worse again. So the uniqueness is just kind of like a legitimacy kind of aspect of the argument. So um, it just says that like you're not just making this up. Like there's a unique aspect to how your plan specifically triggers a world in which it would be forced off. So that's what uniqueness is. So you can say like um, 
well, we'll move on to it. It'll make sense as we go on. So then there's a link. So how the plant directly causes it. So uniqueness and link are kind of like, kind of one of the same in a certain aspects. The link connects. So you, so the link is just saying like, how did you get from point A to point B? Like, what is the things that connects the two together? So um, if we're going through that, like body cams make, actually let's not go into body cams. Let's do something a little bit easier. Let's go into like, okay. So for example, someone got new shoes, right? And then those new shoes caused them to break their ankle. So you're saying that, no, okay. So you're like, I should buy new shoes because they can be better like ankle support, right? And then the negative is going to say, no, those new shoes will actually be worse than if you didn't buy any new shoes because those new shoes will cause you to break your ankle. And then the link would be like, <laughs> the broken ankle is due to the shoes and not because you tripped and fell downstairs. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So like, it's like if the um, the app is saying, oh no, you didn't break your ankle because you the new shoes, you broke your ankle because you fell down the stairs. And then the next week, like, no, you broke your ankle because those new shoes were heavy and that caused you to trip and then break your ankle. So that's kind of like the link. So it's like, how did you get from point A to point B? Uh, and then um, internal link, don't worry about the internal link too much. No one really goes and um, talks about that in novice, but like I see we move up to JD and Bryce to become more. And don't stress yourself out about internal link. It's just a fancy link. <laughs> and then we're going to have the impact. So the impact is the ultimate like bad thing that happens as a result of not doing the plan. Examples include extinction, re-entrenchment, structural violence, etc. So an example of this is saying, oh, I'm reading it. Okay, bye Kennedy. See you next week. Um, cool. So <laughs> the impact is like, what is the big result of not doing this? So an example of this is saying that if we, okay, so here's the plan, right? The plan is to, that we need to inv uh, invest in our space force to prevent a meteor attack from happening, right? So, and then if, so then they're saying that if we don't invest in the space force, then the meteor hit earth and then everybody dies. That's the impact, right? <laughs> so that's exact, that's what, um, that's the whole aspect of the impact. So if we're going on the next side, you can say, actually, that doesn't happen because the likelihood of that impact happening is extremely low. I'm kind of going in a different direction, but you guys understand kind of what the impact is. The impact is the ultimate bad thing that's happening. So it could be like, police brutality is the impact of people getting hurt and dying is the impact. So if I'm the negative, I'm going to say that you make the impact worse because not investing allows the meteor to hit her. And then the impact is extinction. Does anyone have questions about that? Cool. Okay, we'll move on. Um, topicality. So this is a procedural argument, meaning that the claim about the norms of debate, you're saying that their ass interpretation of the resolution is bad for debate, and that the judge shouldn't allow them to weigh their advantages because the plan makes debate work. Debate worse off um, interpretation. Okay, so I'm just going to go into what topicality is as a whole aspect. So topicality is it's a, basically like the rule book of debate, and you're saying they're not abiding by the rules. So, so in debate, there's there's different ways you can kind of argue, and there's newer styles of arguments that like appeared in the most recent years, and people argue that that's not a fair way to debate because that's not what the sport, like it's not in the debate rule book in a way. So topicality is just saying that you're not abiding by the rules, and that's not fair, and you shouldn't be allowed to do that in this round. So topicality is kind of like holding them to the rule book of debate. So, so certain arguments, like there's a bunch of different, like nitpicky, like certain ways you have to structure your argument so that it's fair in debate. And so if you pull a topicality argument, you're saying that the affirmative is not abiding by the debate rule book and they shouldn't be allowed to do that. That's what topicality is. And then you have the violations. So when you run a topicality argument, you hold them to violations that are interpretation, um, 
standards in voters. And <laughs> these things basically just say like, hey, like the affirmative plan is not within this, like the rule book. Um, it violates um, the rule book descriptions the and that's not fair and then judge you should vote for us because the affirmative is a playing fair and then when we don't play fair in debate it harms our educational aspect of it so topicality is it's really interesting kind of like technical kind of argument and it's just holding the lecture coming pretty soon too this is just kind of like an overview but for the most part like anything that's not a critique is allowed kind of because critiques are another way of it's a okay <laughs> it's a lot to like just say one slide but essentially anything that's not in the evidence packet is not topicality does that make sense so if someone brings their own arguments or someone decides to critique the system instead of like advocating for a policy action then that's a violation of topicality and then you go into that a lot but um we will go more into topicality that's just introducing you to it so counter plans um these are competitive advocacies meaning that they purport to solve the advantages better than the plan internal net benefit or solve the advantages without causing the disadvantage internal net benefit and then there's the text the text of the counter plan is the actual plan that you think is better than the app there's the solvency aspect um see the section in the app and then the net benefit is the reason that the counter plan is better than the plan. Something that can be carded as evidence. So apart from the slide, essentially the counter plan is just giving your own plan in the round. So the app brings their plan body cameras, right? The negative can then bring in a counter plan and saying, actually, instead of body cameras, we should just get rid of lease in general. And that's their plan. So it's when the negative brings up their own plan against the app's plan. And then when they do that as a negative argument, you kind of have to weigh which plan is necessarily better. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So the counter plan is just saying like, I don't like your plan at all. It's terrible. And then I'm going to give my own plan. So instead of just going against the app, they're going against the app and then presenting their own plan. And that's the counter plan. Now we're in critiques, and there's this huge long slide of what critiques are, but I'm just going to give you a general overview of what critiques are. So critiques are just ways that we look at the root cause of our issues instead of the kind of surface level thing. So when you have a critique or you decide to run a critique, you want to go deeper and actually figure out like how this problem originally started. So if, for example, for body cameras, right? That's a problem. And then the app is just trying to solve for like police brutality. But then if you have a critique, you're saying police brutality is not just because of police officers, like um, just being police officers. It's because police officers actually have a racial bias against people. And then that's due to structural racism. And that's, and then that racism is then institutional. And then, you know, like, so you're not just looking at the surface level, you're actually digging deeper as to how this problem occurred. So if you have something saying like, um, Another example, apart from body cameras, is like fast fashion and the fast fashion industry and how it destroys our planet. And you can just blame that like pollution on the fast fashion industry. If you were critiquing it, you're saying the, the pollution isn't just because of fast fashion. It's because of capitalism and people that want for money. And that need for money is then creating that, that fast fashion and then that fast fashion then creates pollution. So the root cause isn't fast fashion. That root cause is capitalism and that need for money over saving the environment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. So like, if you would run a critique, you're just digging deeper into the problem instead of looking at the surface level that's presented in the round. And then case. Case is the easiest thing <laughs> to argue on the next side. You're just arguing directly against their plan. So case is when you don't bring in a counter plan, you don't bring in a critique, you're not talking topicality. Case is just, directly refuting their plan. So if they have a card that says body cameras reduce violence, if you are going to argue against it, that's, so that's their case, it reduces violence. You're gonna bring in a negative argument and say, actually my study shows that it actually doesn't reduce violence and actually perpetuates it even more. 
So you're just talking about what they said. So if you're directly refuting what they said, that's the case. If you bring in your own arguments like critique, topicality, um, and stuff like that, then that's in counterplant, that's off case. Does that make sense? Yeah, so that's just going head on to like attack the app, right? You're not trying to do anything cool or yes. whatever. Okay. Yeah, so when, you, when you're on case, you're just directly refuting the affirmative. Off case, that's when you bring in your own arguments like counter plan, like um, topicality, like um, critiques. Those are off case. So um, sometimes in a round when you're debating, judges will be like, can you give me a roadmap? Or can you tell me like what order your arguments are going to be in? And they're going to be like, are you going to start with on case or are you going to start with off case? If you decide to directly refute the app, that's on case. And then if you decide to do a critique, that's off case. Or if you decide to start the critique, you're going to be like, my order is off case, then on case. All right, let me know if this doesn't make sense. We're going through a lot. That's okay. Thank you guys all for coming out. I will see you next week.